Hi and welcome back to my channel. This week's problem is about trying to find the length BC. We've got a quadrilateral here uh, with one side labelled as AB which is 6 and we've got an area labelled and that's AED as 15. We've also got the angle BAC is equal to CAD. Okay, so those angles are equal. We've got two right angles, as you can see, one at B, so A, B, D, and one at C, A, C, D. Can you find the length from B to C? If you want to solve this problem, pause the video now because I'm going to go through my solution in three, two, one. Okay, so the first thing that I wanted to do here is to start labeling some angles. So I'm going to call this one theta and this one theta because they have to be the same angle. That means that this angle is then 90 minus theta and because vertical opposite angles are equal, we have this angle is 90 minus theta as well, which means that this angle CDB is also theta. Now what that means, which we are gonna use later on, is that triangles BAE and CED are similar triangles because they've got all the same angles. Now from there, I can work out that this angle at E, A, E, D is 90 plus theta because angles on a straight line add up to 180. And I can then, by subtracting 90 plus theta and theta from 180 degrees, I can get that this angle E, D, A is 90 minus two theta. Now, I can then put this quadrilateral inside a semicircle, and the reason I can do that is because the angle in a semicircle, in a triangle, is 90 degrees. And we've got two triangles here with a right angle in, and so we can put uh, the length AD as the diameter of the semicircle, because we've got this right angle at B, or ABD, and another right angle at ACD. What we can then start to use are some circle theorems. So we've already kind of used one already uh, in the fact that um, angle in a semicircle is 90 degrees to give us this semicircle. But the other one that I want to use is that cyclic angles, opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral are add up to 180. OK, <laughs> getting my circle theorems a bit mixed up, not mixed up, but the words in a different order. Anyway, opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral, so that's a quadrilateral with each corner on the circumference of a circle, opposite angles will add up to 180 degrees. Now, by that logic, I can work out the angle ABC, or specifically angle DBC, uh, and I can do that because I can do 180, take away 90 minus 2 theta, take away uh, theta, that will give me that angle as being theta okay now i can also work out using the same rule that angle b c a is 90 minus 2 theta because we do 180 take away two thetas and then take away the right angle that is at point c already okay now from there what we can do is we know that these two sides, so B to C and C to D, are equal. And that's because triangle BDC is isosceles. We've got base angles that are equal, the thetas there, okay, at B and at D. Okay, next we're going to drop a perpendicular to side AD from the point E. Okay, so that obviously will meet AD at right angles. That's why we've done that. Okay, now we can start to work out a few things from there. We can work out those angles and 90 minus theta and 2 theta by working or, or subtracting the angles we've got in those two respective triangles uh, from 180. So subtracting the 90 and subtracting the theta from triangle AEF and subtracting 90 and 90 minus 2 theta from triangle EFD. Okay, now from there, if we look at triangles ABE and AEF, they have the same angles in them and they share a side, A to E. Therefore, they are congruent triangles, hence A to F has to also be 6. Right, now I'm going to label E to F as H. And because we've got those two congruent triangles, B to E must also be H. Okay? Now the next thing from there is to start getting F to D. How can we work that out? Well, if we consider the triangle AED, so that full green shaded triangle, we know the area is 15 and you work out the area of a triangle by doing half the base times the height. 
So, double both sides, base times the height is 30, so that means the base is 30 divided by h. Now, if we subtract 6 from that, we'll get the length f to d, so 30 divided by h minus 6. Okay, so we're getting somewhere. We've got things in terms of h now, which is good. Now, the next thing I want to do is consider this triangle, so e, f, d, and this larger triangle, a, b, d. Now, both of those triangles have the same angles. They both got 90 degrees, they both got 2 theta, uh, and they both got 90 minus 2 theta. Okay, so what that means is they are similar triangles. Obviously, the ABD one, we're going to need to flip that slightly, but we can start looking at scale factors. And really, what I want to work out is this length here, E to D. I want to call that X at the moment. Okay, so let's separate these out. Here we go. And all the sides labelled as they should be. Now, I want to look at scale factors. So to go from H to 6, corresponding sides there, are times by 6 over H. So if I use that same scale factor with e to d, going from e to d to a to d, x times by 6 over h gives me 30 over h. Now, something times by 6 gives me 30 is basically what that means. What do you times by 6 to get 30? It times 5 by 6 to get 30. So the length e to d has to be 5. That tells us that x is 5. So on the side length here, b to d, I can replace that x with 5. Okay, so that length is now h plus 5. Now, as you might want to do, or you might expect, I'm going to use uh, the scale factor once more for these sides at the bottom. So 30 over h minus 6 times by 6 over h gives us h plus 5. Now, we're going to need to do a little bit more working out with this one than we did on the last equation. So, multiply through by 6 over h, we get this times everything now by h squared to get rid of our denominators and get everything onto one side so it's equal to zero, we get this cubic. Now, there's a couple of ways to solve a cubic if you've done A-level maths. Um, if there are whole number solutions, then you will be able to use the factors of minus 180 and use the factor theorem to uh, find solutions. Um, that's I suppose, well, that is assuming there are whole number solutions. So really, the better way to do this, there is a cubic formula in the same way there's a quadratic formula. Okay, so you could use that and reverse the process. Um, we can factorise this to h minus 3 brackets h squared plus 8h plus 60. Okay, so whichever way you want to go about doing that, um, whether that's the cubic formula, uh, if there are not exact solutions, would probably be the best, best route to go down, but... You can use the factor theorem as well. Um, although, like I said, there are, there are assumptions you're making with that, which could be uh, problematic, let's say. However, we end up with this. Now, h squared plus 8h, 8h plus 60, the discriminant will be less than 0, i.e. that will have no solutions. And so the only solution we get is that h is equal to 3. Okay, so we've got h, we've got x. Let's go back to our original diagram now here. We'll replace the h's and the x with the corresponding values. So 3's and 5's. And then we've also got this length f to d, which is, which is 30 divided by h minus 6. So that would be 4. Right, now we're getting pretty close. Um, we need to work out the length b to c, or we could work out the length c to d, because they are the same as we know, because the it's isosceles, the base angles are the same, those thetas there. Okay, now the next thing we are going to do is we're going to start to work out A to E. And it's because of a reason we, well, I spoke about, not we spoke about, but I, I mentioned earlier, which we're going to come on to very shortly. But this length AE, we've got a 3, we've got a 6, work out the hypotenuse, square them, add them, square root it, gives us 3 root 5. Okay, so put that on our diagram. Now, we've got this triangle, ABE, and this triangle, ECD. They are similar triangles. I spoke about that earlier because all the angles in there are the same. So, again, what we've got here, similar triangles, scale factors, and then we can work out that length C to D, which is going to be the length that we want. It's the same length as the length we want. So, from 5 to 3 root 5, we would times that by 3 root 5 over 5. Divide by 5 times by 3 root 5. 
Now that's going from the small shape to the bigger shape. If we want to go from the bigger shape to the small shape, we are going to divide by our scale factor. Okay, so six divided by three root five over five gives us two root five. So going back to our diagram, C to D is two root five. So that means B to C, our question mark is also two root five. Okay, thank you very much for watching. It's a pretty neat answer, but I, I thought at least a pretty complicated problem. Let me know if you felt it was an easy problem in the comments below. Let me know if you had a different solution. If you like this video, please drop a like on the video. If you're not already, please subscribe to the channel. We're getting ever closer to a thousand subscribers, which is amazing. So thank you very much. Um, thank you for watching. Have a great week, everybody, and I will see you next week, 5 p.m., hopefully, next week. A little bit after this week, but hopefully more like 5 p.m. next week week back to normal have a great week see you next time bye bye